I don't know if it's this angle, it's the light, but you know, it's like I'm getting <clears throat> leaner and more handsome. Is that just me, ladies? Mm -hmm. It's look like I'm getting skinnier. Glory to God, glory to the Chang God, glory to the Father, Spirit. Hey, how are you, David, my hero? Well, hey, David, if you had mentioned me in your apologetics.com, you mentioned my bro vocab, that's my homie and John McRae. Had you thrown a dog a bone and said, yeah, it's Sam Shimon's prehistoric YouTube page, maybe I would have gotten a couple of subscribers. But now you've left me doing clickbait, putting your name in the titles to attract your haters. I carried this guy all my life, all that weight on my shoulders. My back is not the same. At least he can say, hey, you know, we're going to start a, uh, a YouTube apologetics army. Oh, I forget, but I don't qualify for being a YouTuber. Well, I'm working on it, man. As you can see, I'm doing videos every day, hater. By the way, pray for the connection by the grace of God because, again, I'm in my brother's home. I don't know how it's going to stand up. <clears throat> Internet's not the best. Hey, but hey, hater would, by the way. Hey, hey, that, hey, at least that's public study. Hater would, Lord willing, February 15, I found the place. I got a place for me and my bro from Chicago. So everything is falling in place so that eventually we will do what you suggested. We'll all live together near the same area so we can do live streams every day. It's coming into place if you're praying and not hating. And, you know, drop me a couple of bucks. You know what I'm saying? Your Boku bucks. All right. Okay, folks. Hate away. Hate away. By the way. If you want proof that a person is saved only by grace and mercy and love of the triune God, and that God in his mercy can blind a woman who loves Jesus to marry you, look to David Wood. He is proof salvation is only by grace, and that it has to be the grace of God to find a Proverbs 31 wife like he did. So thank you, brother, for confirming the truth of Scripture. I know. We You guys remember that song? But I got it. Yeah, you guys got to not hate. I'm by the grace of the trying God. I'm getting skinnier. I'm getting. Look, man, I'm looking at myself and I can't stop looking at myself. It's like, wow, you're such a good looking bald Assyrian guy. In fact, if I was a woman, I'd ask you out, Sam. Would you go out with me? You're not my type. <laughs> So even Sam turned me down. Someone reminded me, was it, uh, is he here, Bill, Billy Mandley? Or I believe it was, <clears throat> not Billy Mandley, Bill Thompson. Someone reminded me of the scene of the Lord of the Rings where you had Frodo Baggins and Samwise, Samwise Genji. He was talking about one of the scenes was really touching, made him cry. I remember the scene where Frodo looks at Samwise Genji. And he says, you know, talks about his stories. He goes, he wants to hear a story about Samwise Genji because he's the hero. You're the real hero, Samwise Genji. Frodo! You're right. I do pronounce it Frodo. Frodo. Don't you lose him, Samwise Genji. I don't mean to, Sam. I don't mean to. The topic is, it's part two of, is the Quran God's word? Thank you for reminding me. But I'm using clickbait because I'm so desperate. I'm panhandling. I'm using names of haters whose YouTube channel are booming, even though they got no no good content, and most of the content they just stole from me, right, to get people. It's part two of Is the Quran God's Word? By the way, here's the link to the article <clears throat> that I'm going to be using for this session. Here's the link to the article. Please, guys, save these links, study the material, use them, download them, print them out, but don't charge. Freely you receive, freely you give, right? Use them in your studies, in your apologetic classes, right? <clears throat> this is this is the article for part two. This is part two of Is the Quran God's Word? Further proof why the Quran cannot be the word of the true God. Now, I did a previous session on Malachi chapter 3, 1. Glory to the triune God. The Father's Holy Spirit blessed that session so we could see the meat of Scripture, how the Scriptures from A to Z point to God being multipersonal, the God is triune, Father, Son, and Spirit, that Jesus is the God-man, and that salvation comes by his grace, 
from his mercy and love through our faith and trust in what Jesus did and Jesus alone. Okay? So, hey, Lukman Ahmed, good you're here, buddy. Did you see how this is clickbait? We just attract. <laughs> it's unbelievable, dude. I put Christian Prince's name and the Muslims show up. Is this amazing or what? It's funny, isn't it? That's hilarious. Pray for a fruitful discussion that this man, that the Spirit's working in his heart to see the truth of Jesus. But it's amazing. I put Christian Prince's name and a Muslim shows up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You search Christian Prince. Yes, look, man, we're, this is part two of a discussion I did yesterday on why the Quran cannot be God's word. But I can ask you some questions if you want to answer in the text. Guys, do you want me to use him for the purpose of showing you why these arguments are refutable in the hopes that God will convict them to repent and turn to the Lord? Okay. <clears throat> so pray for the crowd to show up. We had about 180. Glory to God. I want quality over quantity, but if we get a large number of quality people who really want to learn to be used of the Holy Spirit to glorify Jesus. Okay, here is the link to the article. Okay, now we're going to ask uh, Protestant believer, can you post chapter 10, verse 37? I don't think this is going to last this conversation between my friend, Lukman, Ahmed. Okay. But chapter 10, verse 37, look, man, I'm going to ask you some questions. And guys, please, when I'm dealing with someone, don't engage the person. Don't gang up on him. Just pray. Now, this is when you need to pray. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, fill us with the Spirit and use us to glorify Jesus Christ in the power of the Spirit. And Father, anoint me, anoint all of us. Help me to speak truth without error and recall the facts correctly and present them for the glory of Jesus so that even Muslims get saved, Father. Use us and convict the hearts of Muslims to fall in love with your son, Jesus. Have your way. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, take over. We need you. We love you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bro, Sam, get ready for the usual. Well, all right. Okay, look, man. Chapter 10, verse 37. We're going to quote the Quran. <clears throat> no, you, you love Asa, but Asa is not the true Jesus of history. And I'll show you that in a minute. Protestant, go ahead. Look, man, I'm going to read the verse. Please answer questions. Please, so we can have a fruitful discussion. I'm waiting for Protestant. Are you there, bro? Okay, look, man, I'm going to read. Pay attention, please. And this Quran is not such, and guys, don't engage him, please. Just pray. And this Quran is not such as could be forged by those besides Allah, but it is a verification of that which is before it and a clear explanation of the book. There is no doubt in it from the Lord of the world. So the Quran says it's a clear explanation of the book. Now, what translation are you using? Just curiously. Just curiously, what translation are you using? Let's go to my article. Yeah. Instead of, okay, here. Can you use them, uh, my, the quotes from my article, Protestant? Here goes. Chapter 10, verse 37. Eunice. Here it is. And a full explanation of the book. A full explanation of the book. That's ex excellent. Full explanation of the book. Okay, chapter 12, verse 111. Chapter 12, verse 111. <clears throat> chapter 12, verse 111. That's good. I'm going to quote the last part. If you can go to the article itself, part one, Protestant, if not, it's okay. Here it goes. Use the tev, uh, translation what? What's this tafsir, sakhir? Never heard of it, but you can post it if you want. You can even go to the Arabic if you want. Okay, here you go. Chapter 12, verse 111. Indeed, in their stories, there's a lesson for men of understanding. It is not a forged statement, but a confirmation of Allah's existing book, the Torah, the Injil, and other scriptures of Allah, and a detailed explanation of everything. <clears throat> and a detailed explanation of everything, and a guide and mercy for the people who believe. <clears throat> so, he's posting for you. Look, man, this is the second passage that says, the Quran provides a full exposition, a detailed explanation of everything. Everything you need to know is in the Quran. The Quran provides a full exposition of everything. <clears throat> For the sake of argument, I'll limit it to the Quran. Everything in the Quran is fully de detailed, clearly explained, right? Full exposition, everything. That's chapter 12, verse 111. That's Surah Al Yusuf. And a detailed explanation of everything. Now, chapter 41, verse 3. Chapter 41, verse 3. 
<clears throat> now he's going to end up denying chapter 41, verse 3. Yeah. Well, it doesn't say everything you need to know to reach Silah. Can you show me in chapter 12, verse 111, where it limits it to reaching Silah, meaning reaching Allah? Can you show me that in 12, 111? Now, 41, verse 3, a book whereof the verses are explained in detail. So now, Luqman, this verse says, this is a book that explains its verses in detail. Detailed explanation, full exposition of everything. That means according to these verses, any question I ask you about the Quran, you should be able to answer from the Quran. If you can't, you're falsifying the passages. Look, man, please, let's not play games. A detailed explanation of everything, full exposition of everything, clearly explaining all things, but I'll limit it to the Quran. Let's limit it to the Quran and reaching Allah. I'll agree with you. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Okay. Luqman, who is the mother of Ishmael? Yeah, I don't think this guy's going to last long. He's playing games again. Who is the mother of Ishmael? Who is the mother of Ishmael? Ish Ishmael? Guys, don't engage him. Let me deal with him. It may not be long. Let's see. Okay, he's not answering. If you're not going to answer, we're going to we're going to not waste our time with you, friend. Okay, can you show me in the Quran where it says Hajar, Hagar is the mother of Ishmael? Guys, Eric, I'm going to ask you one more time. Don't engage the Muslim. Let me deal with him. So you're not respecting me. Don't gang up on the gentleman. Can you show me Luqman where the Quran says Ishmael's mother is Hajar, Hagar. Where does the Quran say the mother of Ishmael is Hagar? Come on. Sorry, guys, for the delay because it's going to take him a while to answer. Did you guys did you see what he did? He went into the Bible like I said they need to yesterday. Here is a case study proving my point. Did you catch it, guys? Did I not say glory to the triune God, glory to Jesus Christ? He's given us wisdom and knowledge and arguments that are irrefutable, that cannot be refuted if you're seeking the truth. You see, they need the Bible to bail out the Quran. No, Luqman, let me repeat what the passage has stated. Send Tul to his to his heart on. Because this guy's talking about erections because he's a, he's got a fantasy of some erections. This tool, Balkan, is distracting. Look, man, let's try this again. Don't play games. Here's what I need you to do. I want you to go back to the verses of the Quran where it says that the Quran provides full explanation of all its verses, <clears throat> provided you look to the Bible to help explain the Quran. Where does the Quran say you need the Bible to explain the Quran? You ignore chapter 10, verse 37. Let's look at chapter 10, verse 37. No, that's not what it said. It said it has all the details for all of its verses. Look, man, you're playing games with me. If you're playing games with me, you're not going to last in my channel. Let's look at chapter 10, verse 37. Let's read chapter 10, verse 37. Protestant, you there, or do I need to post it, brother? Let me know. Yeah, he's not going to answer. He can't. He's not able to. Okay. Sorry, Protestant, I think uh, he got raptured. Okay. And this Quran is not such as could ever be produced by other than Allah, but it is a confirmation of what was before it. So it confirms the Torah, the Injil, and a full explanation of the book. Okay, look, man. Focus on the last part. A full explanation of the book. So the Quran doesn't need the Bible. It provides a full explanation of the Bible and of what's in the Quran. So why are you going to the Bible when 1037 says the Quran fully explains the book? But if it needs the Bible, it doesn't fully explain the book.
Hit that like button, folks. So, no, it doesn't. You just said that Hagar is the mother of Ishmael according to the Bible. So notice how he just contradicted himself. He just said it doesn't need the Bible. Thank you. Now we're back to square one. Show me in the Quran where Hagar is said to be the mother of Ishmael. You got it? You see how he just contradicted himself? Show me in the Quran where it says Hagar is the mother of Ishmael. Come on, look, man. First he says, the Bible, we believe it's the Word of God, but the Quran doesn't need the Bible. Okay, it doesn't. Okay, let me make it easier for you. Here, let me give you another one. Okay, guys, don't engage him. Let me engage him. Please, don't engage him. Let me engage him. So he doesn't get overwhelmed with too many people. Okay. Surat Al-Lahab, chapter 111. Can you call me? Well, no, I don't want you to call me because we're not going on on a date. Chapter 111. In the, in the future, I'll try to set up something where people can call me. Chapter 111, final example for you, Luqman, and then we're going to go to part two. Chapter 111 of the Quran, Surah Al-Lahab. No one's texting fast. What do you mean? I'm simply talking, and I'm giving you a chance. You can take the time to make your point. We're waiting. Okay, chapter 111, Luqman. We're waiting for Parasim posted. Who is Abu Lahab, and who is his wife? Surah, Surah Al-Lahab. Okay, read with me. This is Surah Al-Lahab. The power of Abu Lahab will perish and he will perish. This is the Quran. The power of Abu Lahab will perish and he will perish. Watch this, Luqman. We're going to read slowly because I want you to answer the question. We were sailing along. We're waiting for two and the rest. Okay. I'm just waiting for a... a Protestant. I don't know what's going on with my brother. Okay. His wealth and gains will not exempt him. Okay. Will not atone, save him. He will be plunged into flaming fire. Okay. So Abu Lahab will perish and he'll be plunged into flaming fire. And his wife, the wood carrier, and his wife will carry the wood in hell. Oh, interesting. Almost done. Guys, pay attention. Because Lukman's going to have to answer. We'll, we'll have upon her neck a halter of palm fiber. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Lukman, who's Abu Lahab? Who's Abu Lahab? And why is Allah so angry that he's going to burn him in hell? Make him perish in hell and his wife. Carrying the wood for fire in hell. Who's Abu Lahab? Lukman? Who's Abu Lahab? Luqman. He's got two names from the Quran, Luqman and Ahmed. Did you know according to Islamic tradition, the Luqman that's mentioned in the Quran? Okay, guys, did you see what he said? Just don't engage him, Cruz. Give him time. He said he's Muhammad's uncle. He is the uncle, uncle of Muhammad. Show me in the Quran where it says Abu Lahab is Muhammad's uncle. Show me in the Quran where it says Abu Lahab is Muhammad's uncle. He's the uncle. Where'd you get that from? If you guys keep engaging him, you're going to overwhelm him. Respect me, so don't engage him so he doesn't feel overwhelmed. Truth will set you free. What does 1 Corinthians 1.17 have to do with my topic? Okay, how do you know? Look what he just said. He was one of the Meccan Quraysh leaders. How do you know he was one of the Meccan Quraysh leaders who opposed Muhammad? Show me in the Quran. He is a leader from Quraysh who lived in Mecca who opposed Muhammad. Show that to me from the Quran. So he's not getting it, folks. Where did you get Abu Lahab is a leader from the Quraysh tribe living in Mecca who opposed Muhammad? Look, man, you still didn't get it. The Quran says that this book explains all its verses in details. So you don't need the Hadith. Once you go to the Hadith, you just prove that the Quran is a lie, Muhammad is a liar, and your God is a liar.
Truth will set you free. You know you're going to get banned, sister. You know that, right? We're talking about the Quran. You quote a passage about salvation having nothing to do with baptism. What has that got to do with the topic of the Quran? So you can't even respect yourself enough to follow the discussion, sister. All he can say is, oh, my. You see, we're going to be here all day, and look, man, won't be able to answer. So now, look, man, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to stay and listen, but here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Pay attention. Don't attack. Don't criticize. Don't bring up issues about the Bible. Listen to my discussion. If you have questions about my discussion, you can stay. Don't change the subject because I want you to stay and learn. Yeah, I know. The question makes no sense because you can't refute Islam. So, look, man, sit. Listen, you can ask questions about the topic. Don't go on tangents. Don't attack the Bible. Don't tell about your, we're talking about the Quran being the word, not of God, but of the devil. Okay. So guys, you just saw an example. Muslims are stumped by their own Quran. They don't know how to deal with the Quran. They don't know how to address the Quran. They have to admit, acknowledge that the Quran is incomplete. You need the Hadith, but the Quran says it's complete. You need nothing. So they see that the Quran is wrong, full of errors, but they don't want to admit it. So now notice you have, yeah, truth, you're going to get banned. You need to go. Don't come back, sister. I'm sorry. Send her over here because she has no respect for the room. Sorry, sister. Don't come back again. God bless you. Okay. So I want you to see you have two camps of Muslims. You have the camp of Muslims who realize that the Quran says that it is a perfect book that provides detailed exposition for everything. So you need nothing but the Quran. And then you have the other camp of Muslims who see that the Quran is incomplete. It doesn't make sense apart from the Hadiths. Right? You, If you're going to ask me what she said, I'm going to send you with her. She's posting 1 Corinthians 1.17 about salvation, not including baptism which is not my topic. My topic is Islam, the Quran, and I'm dealing with a Muslim. If you guys can't respect yourself to follow the discussion, find somewhere else to go. Ironically, she doesn't quote the verse when we're talking about the Bible. She quotes the verse, which has nothing to do with the topic here. Okay? Anyway, so look, man, you can sit and listen because I want you to get saved. Here's the article we're using. Let's continue the discussion. If you remember yesterday in part one, I stated that the Quran contradicts itself. See, notice, Luqman just admit the Quran is very hard to understand. He just proved that the Quran is a lie because it says the Quran is easy to understand. Chapter 16, verse 89. Post that for me, Protestant. Dakit Aziza. God bless you. Shalamat Mana. Lord bless you. Chapter 16, verse 89. You see, he just contradicted the Quran. He said the Quran. Here, let me repeat it. Luqman just said Muhammad lied. The Quran is a lie. And God did not inspire the Quran. Quran is very hard to understand. There are a lot of secrets and treasures. He just proved that the Quran is a lie. Muhammad is a liar. Why? Because let's go back to see what the Quran said. 1689. And we sent down to thee the book explaining all things. Now, 16, 103, chapter 16, verse 103, right? <clears throat> Surat al-Nahl, 103, the Quran says, And indeed we know that they say it is only a human being who teaches him. The tongue of the man they refer to is foreign. While this, the Quran, is clear Arabic tongue. Now, chapter 43, verse 3 of the Quran. We verily have made it a Quran in Arabic that you may be able to understand its meanings and admonitions. Wow. Here, 43 verse 3. 43 3. We verily have made it a Quran in Arabic that you may be able to understand. He just said you can't understand. It's hard to understand. And the Quran says, no, you can't understand it. So either he's lying or the Quran is a lie. Allah is a liar and Muhammad is a liar. Chapter 44, verse 2. Okay. By the manifest book, this Quran that makes things clear. He just said this Quran makes things unclear. Did you catch it? 
So the Quran says it makes things clear. He says, no, the Quran is a lie. The Quran is unclear because it has treasures, right? So he just said the Quran is a lie. Wow. Wow. The Quran is a lie. Thank you, Luqman, for helping me prove that the Quran is a lie from hell. Muhammad is a liar, and the Quran is not the word of the true God. The Quran says it's clear. You can understand it. It provides complete details for everything. And you said, no, it doesn't. It's not clear. It's hard to understand. So my book is lying to you, and I'm here to show you that you can't trust my book. It is a lie, so don't believe what it says. So you're a better communicator than the Quran and the author of the Quran because the Quran actually meant to say you can't understand it. It's not fully detailed, even though it does say you can't understand it. It's fully detailed. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Luqman. So he's trying to tell me, don't believe the Quran in order to believe the Quran. Don't believe my book when it says it's clear. It's, it's not hard to understand. It provides details for all of its verses. It explains everything in detail. Don't believe that. That's all a lie. The Quran is lying. It's hard to understand, so now believe the Quran. So now, look, man, thank you for being a case study proving that these arguments are irrefutable by the grace of the triune God, the true God, Jesus Christ, Muhammad's God, uh, God and judge and destroyer, the God who will damn Muhammad to hell, and may that God, the Lord Jesus, save you from Muhammad. Okay? So, guys, Revelation, everyone can't control themselves. Man, you Christians lack self-control. You got to chime in and talk to this guy. Leave the guy alone now. Don't entertain him. Don't speak to him. Let's go back to the subject because he's not going to answer anything. Okay. Here's the article that we're going to be focusing on. Okay. Folks, click on the link. Save this article and use it. As you see, you're seeing. These arguments are battle-tested arguments, arguments we use in the battlefield, spiritual battle, and they're spiritually refined. Tested in spiritual battle, and they're indestructible, irrefutable by the grace of the triune God. You get it? You're seeing it. That doesn't mean they won't come up with answers. They'll say anything and everything, but you're going to see that their answers are silly, they're irrational, they're inconsistent, and they contradict their own Quran. Learn the material, use it for the glory of Christ until every Muslim turns away from Muhammad and turns to Jesus, their only hope of salvation. Right? Okay, so let's now continue. Yesterday's session, I said that according to the Hadith literature, the mother of the book, Um al-Kitab, according to the Hadith, refers to the first chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, which consists of only seven verses. So we're going to go into it because we're going to have fun. Are you ready? We're going to have fun. But remember, this is a live stream. As a live stream, sometimes I have to take a break because my mouth is parched. Pray, I'm, I'm a little under the weather. Ask the Lord Jesus to heal me by his stripes, by his wounds, so I don't get sicker, don't have health insurance. Pray I get better, not worse, by the grace of Jesus. So I'm going to get some water, Lord willing, and we're going to have some fun. But I'm going to entertain you. So get in the saddle, Luke man was a gift from the Lord because he provided a case study why you can trust these arguments if you learn how to use them and the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Christ. Right? But now, let me just entertain you as I get me some water. You don't bring me water. You don't sing me love songs. Well, let me put on a song for you. Or a certain song to depress you and make you cry. So what's beautiful about live streams? Be right back.
say if you know a Syrian this song would make you want to throw yourself from the first step of your patio of your porch okay and those who speak a Syrian knew what he was saying he this by the way the song is about a woman who I think cheated on him and he told her very much take a hike get lost leave me alone I don't want to ever see you don't want to even know you exist Oh man, I can sing. Christian Prince, he's a cure for insomnia. Him and Ali. Well, what Ali? What am I talking about? Thinking Muhammad Ali. Christian Prince, David Wood, and Vocab Malone, the greatest cure for insomnia. When I can't sleep, I just put on Christian Prince and within seconds. With David Wood, I don't even need to play him. All I do is I see his face and I'm knocked out for the night. <laughs> All right, let's begin. Guys, we're going to be using this article. Mr. Snuffleupagus. Okay, so read along with me. Pray that the computer doesn't buffer as the Holy Spirit guides this for the glory of Jesus. Focus on the topic. Now it's about Islam. We may bring up Christian topics related to the topic of Islam. Proving the Quran is not the word of God. So go there because I'm going to be citing, the. if Protestant believers is able to, quote from the verses used in the article itself. Now, chapter 3, verse 7. It says, He it is who has revealed to the, to the, the book, of which there are some verses that are deci decisive. They are the mother of the book, Umul Kitab. Umul Kitab. The Arabic is Umul Kitab. So the clear verses, the decisive verses, the an unambiguous verses, they are the heart of the Quran, Umul Kitab, the mother of the book. Okay? The second part says, and others, ambiguous. But as for those in whose hearts is perversity, they follow what is ambiguous. Now, the Quran consists of over 6,000 verses. Someone gave the exact number earlier. If you go outside of the Quran to know what these verses are, called the mother of the book, you'll be shocked. According to Sayyid Bukhari, I gave you the information in that article, which I'll put in the description box after this session, God willing. Aisha Buley's translation, the Sayyid collection of Al-Bukhari. <clears throat> Let me get you the link. It's all in the article. I'm going to get you the link. Um al-Kitab is one of the names of chapter one of the Quran. Chapter 1 of the Quran is called Surat al-Fatiha, the chapter of the opening, right? <clears throat> now, it says here, <clears throat> let me quote it to you. Here you go. Notice what it says. What is Umm al-Kitab? It is called the mother of the book because it is the first to be written in copies of the Quran and the first to be recited in the prayer. So let me repost it again. This is from Sal Bukhari. This is the subheading by... Bukhari himself in his collection. 
translated by Aisha Beauty. Why is chapter one of only seven verses? Chapter one only has seven verses. Why is that chapter called Um al Kitab, the mother of the book? Because it is the first to be written in copies of the Quran and the first to be recited in the prayer. So here you have from the sound traditions that chapter one of the Quran is called Um al Kitab. Now, the second citation comes from Tafsir ibn Kathir, the commentary of ibn Kathir. And this comes from the abridged English translation of Ibn Kathir's massive commentary on the Arabic Quran, which is in Arabic. This is all in my article. Here's the link. I'm just going to read from my paper because you're going to see where we're going to go with this. You're going to see how much fun we're going to have. Okay. Now, it says this chapter was revealed in Mecca. It's Meccan chapter. The meaning of Al-Fatiha and its various names. This surah is called Al-Fatiha, that is the opener of the book, the surah with which prayers are begun. It is also called Um al-Kitab, the mother of the book, according to the majority of the scholars. Okay, thank our brothers. And sisters for adminning and maintaining control. And thank Protestant for helping me to help you for posting. Lord bless you all. It is also called Um al Kitab, Um al Kitab, Um al Kitab, the mother of the book, according to the majority of the scholars. And Aparas is posting the rest of it. Thank you. And an authentic hadith recorded by At Tirmidhi, who graded it Sahih, sound, Sahih, not Da'if, brother, Da'if Jidda. Abu Huraira said that the messenger of Allah, now citing Muhammad, Alhamdulillah Rabbul Alameen, is the mother of the book. He's quoting Surat, uh, Surat al fatiha It's the mother of the Quran, Um al Quran, the mother of the book, Um al Kitab, and the seven repeated ayat of the glorious Quran. Now notice the titles that Muhammad gave this chapter. It is Um al Quran, the mother of the Quran. It is Um al Kitab, the mother of the book, and the seven. Repeated ayat of the glorious Quran. We're going to come back to this phrase, the mother of the Quran and the mother of the book. We're going to have fun. <sighs> oh, we're going to have such fun. Boy, I love the Bible. It is the word of the true God. And boy, I love the true God of the Bible, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And I love Jesus. And we all love Jesus. Amen? Because he makes destroying all these lies. All these worldviews and ideologies, so easy if you know him and you trust in him and you know his word. Right? We're going to have fun. We're going to come back. Okay. Now it says the reason it is called Um Al-Kitab. Oh, my goodness. What's the reason? Ibn Kathir, what's the reason? What's the reason? Let's see what the reason is. In the beginning of the book of Tafsir, in his Sahih, Al-Bukhari said it is called Um Al-Kitab. Because the Quran starts with it and because the prayer is started by reciting it, right? So basically, we just saw that he's citing the traditions I just cited, that chapter one of the Quran, consisting of only seven verses, is called Um al Quran, the mother of the Quran, and Um al Kitab, the mother of the book. Oh my goodness. Do you remember chapter three, verse seven? What did chapter three, verse seven say? The verses that are Um al Kitab. They are the only verses that are clear and decisive. Let me let me quote it again. Let me quote it again. It is was revealed to the the book of which there are some verses that are decisive, clear, unambiguous, and they are the mother of the book, Um al Kitab. Okay, now I'm really really baffled. You go to the Hadith, you go to the Muslim scholars. The verses that are called Um al Kitab, mother of the book are the seven verses of chapter one. The seven verses of chapter one. But according to chapter three, verse seven, those are the only verses that are clear. Everything else is unclear. So you're telling me there are over 6,000 verses that are unclear. No one know what these verses mean except Allah. And only seven verses are clear from a book that consists of over 6,000 verses. And this book is supposed to be a clear book in Arabic. 
so that people can understand and it provides detailed explanation for all of its verses and explains everything in detail. So now here, first last says there are 6,236 verses. Only seven are the mother of the book. So only seven out of 6,236 verses are clear. That means 6,229 verses are unclear. No one knows what they mean except Allah, according to chapter 3, verse 7. Did, did it sink in before I move on? Do you understand what you just did to the Quran? The real miracle is that people believe this book is a miracle. Uh, but now let's revisit the issue of the Quran being called, I'm sorry, chapter 1 of the Quran being called Umul Quran, the mother of the Quran, and Umul Kitab, the mother of the book. Okay. Folks, here's where I'm going to get really confused. Chapter 6, verse 101 of the Quran. Protestant, can you post that? Chapter 6, verse 101. Well, you haven't seen nothing yet. Wait till I get to why chapter 3, verse 7 was written. But now, chapter 6, verse 101. The originator of the heavens and the earth. How can he have a child when there is for him no concert when he, he created all things and is aware of all things? Okay, folks. Folks, listen to what I'm about to say. And Ali al-Rashid is going to be scared to answer the question. He's going to be tap dancing in Arabic. Okay. Now listen. The logic of the Quran is Allah can only have a true offspring, a true son, is if, is, if he has a consort that he has sex with. In other words, if Allah has no consort, he can't have a true son. You see the logic here? 6101. How can he have a son seeing he has no consort? In other words, the only way you can have a, an offspring, a child, a son or daughter, is if you have a consort that you have sex with, right? Otherwise, you can't simply call someone your child. You can't simply call someone your son or daughter if you haven't sired that one through intercourse with a consort, right? Understand the logic of 6101? Do you understand the logic of chapter 6, verse 101? Okay, folks. Chapter 43, verses 3 and 4. Specifically, verse 4. Now, <clears throat> Protestant, if you can quote from Arbery, I think Arbery, no, no, Arbery doesn't translate, literally. Trans, quote a passage where it says it's in the mother of the book, Umul Kitab. If you can find that. If not, I'll get it. Chapter 43, verses 3 to 4. Notice what verse 4 says. Let me see if I can find. See if I can find, because I don't know. Hold on. Which translation? A lot of them don't translate accurately. Yeah, chapter 43, verses 3 and 4. Let's see. Yeah, Yusuf Ali. Quote Yusuf Ali. Chapter 43, verses 3 and 4. Yusuf Ali. So send Ali on his merry way if this guy's watching. Guys, read with me. 43 verses 3 and 4. Yusuf Ali. We have made it a Quran in Arabic that ye may be able to understand and learn wisdom. And verily, it is in the mother of the book, in our presence, high and dignity, full of wisdom. Guys, please don't be distracted. Focus. This Quran is in the mother of the book, Umm al-Kitab, that's with Allah and the presence of Allah. So this Quran comes out of this mother of the book. It originates from the mother of the book. And the mother of the book is with Allah. Chapter 13, verse 39. Chapter 13, verse 39, Yusuf Ali. Allah doth blot out or confirm what he pleaseth. With him is the mother of the book. Okay, folks, we have problems, Muslims. Muhammad said chapter one of the Quran is the mother of the Quran, Umul Quran. And it's also Umul Katam, the mother of the book. These passages in the Quran says that with Allah is the mother of the book. And the Quran is in the mother of the book. 
Okay, folks, but 6101, pay attention. You've heard this in the past. I know many of you have heard this because I brought this up in previous debates and lectures, but it's good to hear it again. So, chapter of the Quran is called Umul Quran, the mother of the Quran. Umul Kitab, the mother of the book. <clears throat> These two verses in the Quran say there is a mother of the book that's with Allah, and the Quran is in the mother of the book. But, folks, according to chapter 6, verse 101, you cannot have an offspring without a consort. So the Quran has a mommy, a mother. That means the Quran must have a daddy. Who is the daddy of the Quran saying the Quran has a mother? But you don't need to guess. Chapter 43, verse 4 says that the Quran's mother, the mother of the book, is with Allah in our presence. And 1339 says, with Allah is the mother of the book. And the Quran is supposed to be the speech of Allah. Guess what, folks? According to Muhammadan logic, according to the logic of the Quran, Allah is the father of the Quran, and the mother of the Quran is the consort of Allah. And if chapter 1 of the Quran is the mother of the Quran, that means chapter 1 of the Quran is Allah's wife, his, his girlfriend, if not his wife. And that means Allah sired the Quran by having intercourse with chapter one of the Quran. What? What? Did you understand what I just said? Let me repeat it again. Muhammad said chapter one, Surah Al-Fatiha, is the mother of the Quran. Um al Quran and Um al Kitab, mother of the book. The mother of the book, according to 1339 and 43 verse 4 of the Quran, are with Allah in his presence. And 43 verse 4 says the Quran is in the mother of the book. Well, the Quran can't have a mommy, according to 6101, if it doesn't have a daddy, a daddy. So the Quran's mother has to have a consort. But since the mother of the book is with Allah in his presence and the Quran is the word of Allah, that means Allah is the Quran's mommy's consort. Allah is the daddy of the Quran, and the mommy of the Quran is his consort. But hold on. The Hadith say, Surah Al-Fatiha, chapter 1 of the Quran, chapter 1 of the Quran is the mother of the Quran, the mother of the book, means that Surah Al-Fatiha, chapter 1, is Allah's consort, and that he had sex with Surah 1, which then produced the Quran. Wow. Thank you, Masori. He just said that Fatih has feminine in Arabic. But wait, wait, wait. Let's confirm that. Oh, my goodness. Is Fatiha? Well, you can't confirm that because it doesn't have anyway. anyway. Yeah. The Arabic speakers can confirm. Fatiha has feminine in Arabic, right? It's a feminine noun. Fatiha. You and me there? Folks, now we understand why chapter 1, Surah Al-Fatiha, worships Allah and begs Allah not to be upset with her. Did you know that? Let's read chapter 1 so you understand. Man, this is going to get weirder and weirder for you guys. You're like, what is this guy talking about? Hey, you want me to show you why the Quran is not of God? It's a satanic book of misguidance. Proving Muhammad is a fraud. Okay. We're going to read Yusuf Ali, chapter 1 of 7 verses. Yusuf Ali, chapter 1 of 7 verses. Unless, what are you quoting, Protestant? We'll go with Protestant. Okay. Guys, read with me. Notice how chapter 1 begins. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. We'll read his translation. I think it's Osama Dakdok. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. The beneficent, the merciful. Right? Master of the day of judgment. Thee only we serve. To thee only we pray for help, succor, strength. Guide us in the straight path. The path of those whom thou hast blessed, not of those against whom thou art wrathful, nor of those who are straight. Folks, keep in mind, according to Muslim belief, Surah Al-Fatiha is the speech of Allah. It's the speech of Allah. Kalam Allah, the word of Allah. And according to 
Sunni Muslim scholarship. The Quran is uncreated. The Quran is eternal. The Quran has always existed. It has no beginning. And since Surah Al-Fatiha is the essence of the Quran, right? Surah Al-Fatiha, this chapter, chapter one of seven verses, has always existed. It has no beginning. It is eternal. It is uncreated. It was there before creation. So folks, let me ask you a question. This chapter is a prayer. Prayer for guidance and a prayer of worship. Chapter one is a prayer Asking Allah to guide the prayee, and it's a prayer worshiping Allah. So, guys, let me ask you a question. Since Islam says chapter of the Quran is part of the speech of Allah, His word, and Allah's word, speech is uncreated, has no beginning, that means this prayer is eternal, has no beginning. Who in the world was praying this prayer in eternity before creation? Oh, no, no. Do you want me to block you for being that stupid to tell me you don't think scholars believe it was before creation? Do you want me to cite the scholars before I block you to show you that according to Sunni Islam, all of the Quran is uncreated, eternal, existed before creation, and Surah Al-Fatiha is part of Allah's word, part of his speech that's uncreated. Don't ever pontificate out of your ignorance. I won't tolerate that here. Don't tell me what you think because I don't care what you think. You want to get blocked? Make my day. All right. Ignoramuses that want to speak and share their ignorance to mislead people from the truth. Right? Sorry about that, guys. I don't like when people come in and chime in out of their ignorance because there are people stupid enough to make comments out of their ignorance to mislead people. So let's get back to the point in Jesus' name. Let's focus on chapter one. Who was... Praying this prayer in eternity, saying to Allah, you alone we worship, right? And you alone we seek help from. And who is praying, guide us on the straight path, not on the path of those who earned your wrath or those who are misled, right? But those who have your favor. Who was praying this prayer in eternity before creation? Who is talking to Allah, asking Allah, please guide me on the straight path. Don't be angry with me like you're angry with those who've gone astray and those who fell away from your favor, right? Who was praying this? No, JB, JSB. You're not getting the point. Let me show you who was praying it. How can the false prophet Muhammad be praying it, Bernie, when this chapter existed in eternity before creation according to the Muslims? Muhammad wasn't there. You know who's praying it? Chapter 1 was praying it because you're not getting it. Let me break it down. Chapter 1, Surah Al-Fatiha, is the mother of the Quran, the mother of the book. But for the Quran to have a mother, for the book to have a mother, it must have a consort. Chapter 13, verse 39, and 43, verse 4 states, the mother of the Quran, the mother of the book, was there with Allah in His presence. And the Quran is the word of Allah. That means the mother of the Quran is Allah's consort. But the mother of the Quran is chapter 1. So chapter 1 is Allah's consort. For it to be Allah's consort, that means chapter 1 is a living, breathing, conscious entity that Allah has relationships with. And that means that chapter 1 is afraid that like a Muslim husband beats his rebellious wife, Chapter 1 is afraid that maybe Allah will get angry with me and beat me. So it's trying to make sure that Allah is pleased with her. And that's why it's saying, oh Allah, I only worship you. Oh Allah, guide me. And please set me on a straight path. Because I don't want you to be angry with me like you're angry with those that will come into existence. In other words, you just proved Allah is uh, the Quran, chapter 1, Surah al fatiha is Allah's wife, Allah's spouse. And no wonder it's afraid and praying to be guided because chapter one knows that Allah, if angry, will beat her just like Allah commands future Muslims to beat their wives that displease them. Wow.
Did you catch what I just did with the logic of the Quran? You guys see where I went with this? But then chapter 1 adds other problems for Muslims. Chapter 1 adds other problems for Muslims. Let's reread it again. You got it, Sample. Sam, please don't block me. This is the logic of Muhammad. Let's reread it again. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, especially merciful, praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. So chapter one is praising Allah as a good spouse, as a good wife, as a good girlfriend. If it's not Allah's wife, it's his girlfriend's consort. Right? Praise be to Allah, Lord of the world. See Allah, I'm, I'm being a good woman. I'm behaving myself. So don't punish me, please. I'm praising you. Man, I'm being a good spouse. And after all, I gave birth to your, to your book. I birthed your book, the Quran. I gave birth to your offspring. Okay, let's keep reading. The beneficent, the merciful. All right. Well, let's go back. Go up. Sorry about that. Lost my place here. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world, worlds, the beneficent, merciful, master day of judgment. The only we serve. See, I only serve you. I only serve you. And because Allah will sanction polygyny, multiple wives, notice the Surah Fatiha somehow is a multiplicity of spouses or girlfriends in one. Because notice how the chapter speaks of, of itself. The only we serve. So Fatiha is several babes in one, several consorts in one. So Allah is the original polygynist. The only we serve. To the only we pray for strength, Sakura. Guide us, your multiple consorts in one, in the straight path, the path of those whom thou hast blessed not. Blessed not. I'm sorry, the path of those whom thou hast blessed, not of those against whom thou art wrathful, nor of those who are astray, right? But guys, I'm confused. This chapter is talking about those that Allah is angry with and those who have gone astray. But this is an eternal prayer that existed in eternity before creation. Who possibly could have gone astray and who possibly could Allah have been angry with in eternity before creation? Who possibly? Is it perhaps talking about the other surahs of the Quran that also existed in eternity that are uncreated? So is it talking about some of the other surahs? So now Muslims are left in a dilemma. Let me tell you the dilemma that chapter 1 creates for Muslims. Are you ready? You want me to show you the dilemma? Since they believe the Quran is uncreated, eternal, that means Allah has predestined creatures who he'll be angry with and who go astray because this prayer is an eternal prayer that existed before creation. So in order to make this prayer a reality, Allah is going to deliberately create sinners who will be angry with, who go astray, to make chapter 1 a reality that's realized. So these creatures have no choice but to go astray and earn the anger of Allah because this prayer is eternal and is already spoken of rebellious creatures that Allah will damn. So Allah has already predestined folks that he'll be angry with and he'll go astray because this prayer is an eternal prayer that's already mentioning folks who go astray and whom Allah is angry with. Or if you want to say Allah hasn't predestined them, but they have free will. They have free will. That means Allah is dependent on creation for his speech to take the shape and form that it does. In other words, Allah's speech takes into consideration those creatures that will exist, which means Allah's speech is not free to say what it wants. And Allah is not free to say what he wants because Allah, his speech is modeled after what creatures who don't exist will do in the future so that his speech is dependent on these free will creatures to come into being. So Allah and his speech are not free, but they need creation to be what they are. Wow. What in the world 
are Muslims doing following this religion? Why do you want my Skype idea, Christ Christine Ratu? Why? What in the world are Muslims doing following this religion? I'm not here talking about Calvinism, Arminianism. Right? That's another topic for another time. Do you see all the incoherent, unintelligible babble of Islamic belief? You see, it gets worse and worse and worse the more you try to figure out this incoherent, unintelligible babble that Muslims think is the speech of the true God. Everyone with me there? Before I move on, I want it to sink in. Hey, hey, uh, Maria, you're catching the end tail of two sessions, Maria. Make sure you hear both sessions. The one that I did earlier, that's now on my YouTube channel. No need to Skype me. You can ask me here when I'm talking about the Bible. Clear, everyone? Is it clear? How confusing, how irrational, how inco incoherent this religion truly happens to be. Okay, now, I'm going to whet your appetite for part three, so I'm going just to bring it in brief. It's in my article. I'm just going to whet your appetite for now to prepare you for what's to come. Let me give you a link to the article. According to the Muslim commentators, according to the Muslim commentators, chapter three, verse seven, was composed in response to Muhammad's debate with a group of Arabic Christians from Najran. Let me repeat again. According to the Muslim scholars, and the information is there, and I'll talk about it in part three in greater depth. Chapter three of the Quran, specifically chapter three, verse seven, right? In fact, the first 80 odd verses were composed, were quote-unquote revealed to respond to the Christians who raised objections to Muhammad to prove Jesus is God. And this is something stated by the Muslim commentators. When Muhammad was in Medina, a group of Arabic Christians, Arabian Christians from a place called Najran, came and had a debate, a disputation with Muhammad, trying to prove to him that Jesus is God, and they used his own statements, his own Quran, to prove the deity of Christ. So Muhammad came up with the first 80-odd verses of the Quran to respond to their allegations and arguments. Do you guys get that thus far? Right? Here, for example, Tafsir ibn Kathir. Let me give you the link. Let me read what he says. Tafsir ibn Kathir. show you what he says here it goes it's in my article which was revealed in El Medina Surah Imran Surah Al Imran was revealed in El Medina as is evident by the fact that the first 83 ayat the first 83 verses of the chapter in it relate to the delegation from Najran that arrived in Medina Al Medina on the ninth year of Hijra year 632 Christian era we will elaborate on this subject when we explain the ayah the verse about the Mubahala Chapter 3, verse 61. In this surah, Allah willing, we should also state we, that we mentioned the virtues of Surah Al-Imran along with the virtues of Surah Al-Baqarah in the beginning of Tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah. So the Muslim scholars are agreed. The first 83 verses, the first 80 odd verses of this chapter were composed in response to the Arabic-speaking Christians, the Arab Christians, the Arabian Christians from Adran, who had a debate with Muhammad using Muhammad's own statements to prove that Jesus is God, the Son of God. Is that clear? Let me give you the link. Folks, you understand what that means? Let me give you a fourth taste of what's to come, God willing, either tomorrow or sometime during the upcoming week, Lord willing. Chapter 3, verse 7, when it says, there are verses in the Quran that are unclear, ambiguous, and none know their meaning. According to these commentators, that verse, chapter 3, verse 7, was composed 
in response to Christians, quoting verses from the Quran, where the Quran says Jesus is the word of Allah and the spirit of Allah, who raised the dead, created life, created a clay bird and breathed life into it, right? Gave sight to the blind to prove that Jesus is God, the Son of God. The Christians were using those verses of the Quran, where the Quran says Jesus is the word of Allah, the spirit of Allah, who created a bird, breathed life into it, raised the dead, gave sight to the blind to prove to Muhammad, see Muhammad, if you admit that Jesus did all these things, he must be God in the flesh, the Son of God. And you know what Muhammad said? Stop quoting those verses, because those verses are the unclear verses. We don't know what they really mean. Stop focusing on them. Only Allah knows what they mean. Don't use them in the debate. Don't use them in the debate. Someone's ringing the bell. I don't know who's ringing the bell. Hold on one second. I can't open the door if it's... Let me see. Sorry, guys. One second. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry, this is live. Hold on. Yep. Sorry about that. Okay, so what's to come? Lord willing, in part three, we're going to go in-depth on this, on this issue. Okay, are you the one ringing the bell? Yeah, please. Oh, okay, because yeah, I have the back door open too. I was doing a live stream, so I'll come down. Oh, okay. All right, okay, guys, let me just end it here. God willing, in part three, we're going to go further in-depth on why chapter three, verse seven was actually revealed. Because Christians were using the verse of the Quran to destroy Muhammad and prove Jesus is God. And Muhammad said, stop using those verses. No one knows what they mean except Allah. So don't use them in the debate. How convenient. Guys, pray for me. Pray for my daughters that God keeps us perfectly healthy and safe. And that the Lord will bring my daughters to me sooner than later. That the Lord Jesus will help me to get healthier. That he'll make me holier and in love with him. Pray for the provisions because I'm going to move in a new place February 15. Pray for the ministry to take off and that more supporters financially and prayerfully in Jesus name. Love you guys. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Use this information to destroy Islam. So Muslims get saved and Jesus is exalted. Christ is risen and we love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come sooner than later. Lord bless you. Pray for the support that it comes in. And for my daughters, that I'll be with them in Jesus name. Take care.